Austin Faith Dialogue at the Crossroads of Religion and Life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interactions with the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Area Interreligious Ministries in cooperation with KNVA. Join us now for Austin Faith Dialogue. Welcome to Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Carl Gronberg, host of the program. We're delighted that you're here with us during this time of holidays as we look forward in our community to celebrating Thanksgiving. Have you noticed around town and maybe in your home as you've gone into the shopping centers, you've noticed the lights. And on this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue, we want to talk about Festival of Lights. But we want to put that Festival of Lights in the context of the nation of India. Madonna, welcome. Glad to have you here. And Thank yeah, you. Welcome. Glad to be here. Thank you for coming and being Thank with you, us. Thank you, Carl. And I'm going to have you say your names correctly, but I apologize. The Swedish tongue doesn't do so well, but forgive me for that. But My name is Anil Maheshwari. Thank you. And I'm Vandana Agarwal, and I'm so used to having my name pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have problems even with Gronberg sometimes yeah. <laughs> pronouncing that. I met you as we were walking together for peace, the Gandhi Walk, Correct. down Congress Avenue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was so taken with that group of people, including you, that I asked if you'd come and be with us in Austin Faith Dialogue and talk about your lives, your Hindu faith, That's correct. and also about the nation of India. So tell us a little bit about who you are and where you came from. You've been in, in the United States uh, a long time. Yes, I've been in Austin for 26 years and in the, in the U.S. for 28 years. Both my kids were born here. So. And, and have you gone back to India frequently? Uh, yeah, we go back every three years or so, two mm. to three years. Yeah. And have you enjoyed the transition of becoming a part of uh, not only the United States but of Austin? I have loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I love Austin. You, you yeah, look yeah. like you've enjoyed it. Yes. And Neil, how about you? <laughs> Yes, I've been, I was born in India and uh, I moved here about uh, 18 years ago and my family and I, we live here. Uh, our one child was born in India and uh, one was born here and I've been in Austin since uh, 2000, so almost seven years, seven, eight years. We mentioned about Gandhi and the walk. Why is Gandhi so important to the people of India? Gandhi is the father of the nation. So Gandhi is uh, just like Washington would be, George Washington would be for America and probably a little more because Gandhi has also inspired people like Martin Luther King and several other leaders, Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. So he is still the gold standard or platinum standard in terms of thought. And uh, also there is, uh, the, he connects uh, with uh, Ahinsa, which is uh, nonviolence, the truth, uh, you know, search for truth, Satyagraha and the sense of duty, dharma. So he brings in the Hindu values together as a, as a way of you know, living in a perfect, uh, good way. Yes, and Gandhi also was an influence on the entire world, as you mentioned. Some of the leaders of our nation have been influenced by Gandhi and nonviolence. Mm -hmm. But at the very heart of Gandhi was the Hindu faith. The Hindu faith, the Hindu belief in nonviolence, which is kind of throughout our religion, uh, which is what inspired him to do that, you know, fighting against the British, and that's part of the reason why he is thought of as the father of the nation. But his and fight against the British and colonialism yeah. mm -hmm. was not a fight in the, like we call the fight against terror. Correct. This was no. a different type of fight. This was a totally different type of fight. It was like resistance and uh, not cooperate, non-cooperation, you know, just not doing the things that would make the, the British government run smoothly. So. There was no actual violence involved. There's a real so, sense of yeah. sacredness about life in, mm -hmm. in the Hindu community, isn't mm -hmm. that correct? Absolutely. Sacred is the key word for Indian life. And that goes for all of creation? All of creation, in living and non-living. Karn karn me bhagwan means in the smallest particle, there is God. Mm -hmm. The manifestation of holiness, the sacredness exactly. in, in every element of creation. Every, every mm -hmm. element of creation. You mentioned before we came on the air yes. that as your children were growing up and they would invite you to come to their school and talk about yeah. India and the Hindu community, yes. you said that you like to dispel some myths. So on Austin Faith Dialogue, <laughs> go ahead. This is your opportunity. Yeah, I would. And, and you'd be surprised, Carl, that some of these myths are actually incorporated in the textbooks. 
uh, of uh, probably throughout the United States uh, that the you know the basic things they say about Hinduism is that we worship cows and we have multiple idols and uh, I mean they, it's like half truths. Yeah, we respected the cow because it was instrumental in so many of the life functions of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, they gave milk and even the cow dung was used as a very biodegradable fuel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we respected the cow for that reason, but we don't worship it as a you know, except in the sense that we think God is in every every being, whether an animate or inanimate. So in that sense, maybe, but it's not the basic tenet of Hinduism that we worship cows. Yeah, a word so. that she used that I think is so important is, is respect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of uh, part of the, the expression of your faith is respect then for creation, all forms of creation, mm -hmm. and then for all people. Yes. What have you done as a Hindu community to show that respect since you've been a part of, of the Austin community? What does the Hindu community say to the greater community about how we can grow in nonviolence and respect? Oh, the, the Gandhi Peace Walk was certainly one big way, and that's where we connected. And, and uh, so that's one way. Uh, I think there is MK Gandhi Institute in uh, Tennessee, not in here, but I think some of us are taking inspiration from what they're doing. At, uh, it's, it's run by the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. So, and there is a Gandhi Peace March also in Houston. And I think in so many uh, cities, uh, Gandhi's message is relevant, and, and uh, the, the, the number of people coming to that, those kind of walks is uh, growing. Uh, in, in other ways, you know, in, in Houston there is a Gandhi Public Library where there's, you know, Gandhi literature is being made available. So I think as the community comes together, as the need for uh, non-violence is appreciated even more given the current geopolitical uh, circumstances, I think that Gandhi movement is bound to grow. And really I appreciate your calling us and discussing about Gandhi mm -hmm. because you are part of helping Gandhi movement grow. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah, but yeah. we are the beneficiaries, and one of the things in Austin Faith Dialogue, for almost 20 years now, we've been inviting people from the Austin community to come and share their lives, their mm -hmm. faith, and their story. And we're honored to have you here, and we thank you for that. Tell us about the nation of India. This is a, this is a huge nation. India is, uh, is a great nation. India has uh, been there for, uh, as an entity for thousands of years. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of the Indian mythology goes back 3,000 years before uh, for Christ. Uh, Gautam Buddha, who's completely documented, uh, goes back like 500 years uh, before Christ. Uh, Rama, Krishna, the Harappa civilization, they go like 5,000 years before uh, Christ. So, so there's a lot of history, and there is a lot of pride in the richness of the history. A lot of, uh, mm -hmm. we were talking the other time about our scriptures, Veda, Upanishads. They've been written like thousands of years ago. Let, let, let's talk a little bit about that, your scriptures. Yes. Now, you mentioned when we were off the air that the scriptures are, are numerous. They would fill rooms. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Well, How many the scriptures are there? Well, there's four Vedas mainly, oh, yeah. but the Upanishads, there's so many of them. And then the, we have the Bhagavad Gita, and then we have the Ramayana, which is more like an epic story rather than a scripture. Do you and share those scriptures and with your family? Do, how do you live out, we call it the piety of our faith yeah. as a Christian. How do you live out the, the Hindu faith uh, with your children and as a family? Three ways. One is um, every morning we try to do sort of puja, the uh, offering to the gods. Uh, every Sunday, we like to go to the temple and be even among the larger community, pray to the gods in temple and do that. And I would say a third way is to, to encourage them to read Bhagavad Gita and encourage uh, reading all the literature. And do you want to add to that? And uh, I took my kids to a, a spiritual center called the Chinmaya Mission here. Correct. From the time they were five till they both graduated from high school because I felt like they would do a much better job of because they're specialized and and they're also you know they, they like the whole Hindu faith very accepting very open-minded we would have Christmas celebrations there and so it's not like we just did Diwali and and they they learned a lot there and just by more than doing something every day in a ritualistic manner I would more like in, in the in living of life like we are at least vegetarians which is not necessarily a trait of all Hindus but it is a way of, of being nonviolent uh -huh. but you know but uh, so my kids are vegetarians, and I, I mean, I talk to them about the nonviolent aspects of Hinduism and what we believe in. So more in that sense than doing anything ritualistic. 
It has seemed to me, as I've listened to these faith stories through the years, that there is such a connection between the, the cultural, uh, historical experience of a family, such as your families, and, and the faith, that it becomes uh, interwoven. There's a connection between these, that as people of India, uh, this Hindu faith experience is just a part of, of who you are. And you mentioned about going and, and praying to the gods. To some people, that might be a little foreign in light of what you said about we have one God, but we see God in all these different ways. Mm -hmm. When you talk about praying to the gods, what are, you, what are you saying? Well, that's a very good point. We believe in one supreme being, but she also, like you were saying before, we rolled on to the, that, that we could worship anything. We could worship the smallest thing. We could worship you, although you are you're not Hindu. Anyone who is doing good is Devta. Denevala is Devta. Whoever gives is a god kind of thing, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Who is giving us new knowledge, benefiting us in our development, is a god to us. So we could worship anybody. So therefore, you know, the, we have goddess of, um, uh, the, the goddesses with a small g, and the gods with a small g, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. We can have uh, goddess Saraswati, like goddess of knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth. So we have God, uh, Kali, which is the goddess of uh, strength. It seems to me it's, it's a matter of vocabulary, once Correct. again. It's a matter of language. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because what, as, as we go towards Thanksgiving Day in this yes. culture, we think about giving thanks to God for food and yeah, for absolutely. work and yes. for all of the, for each other, yes. uh, for husband, wife, children, all of these, and to recognize that they are all a sign, if you will, uh, of God's goodness and God's yeah. mercy. Mm -hmm. One of the things you talked to me about was the Festival of Lights. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, part of this culture, and you've really become a part of the culture, and you mentioned about Christmas, that's coming in yes. a few weeks, yes. but it's always these lighting these uh, yes. candles and turn on the lights. Talk about the Festival of Lights. What does it mean for the Hindu community and for the people of India to have a Festival of Lights? Festival of Lights is the biggest festival in India. This festival transcends age and you know families and societies, but also trans transcends languages, linguistic barriers, or linguistic communities in India. It is the one festival that's celebrated around the world, wherever Hindus are. And what it means is uh, lights a celebration of good over evil. There are certain good uh, mythological stories around, you know, Lord Rama coming back after winning the war against the evil guys, and it was it happened to be no moon day. There was no light. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the residents of Amavasya, the city, yeah. Amavasya, yeah. so the residents of the city, you know, lit up the earthen lamp with pure butter in there, and those, the whole city was lit up. Wow. Ever since, though, for about 3,000 years, the, trans, the tradition has been to, on that day, light up the lamps, and now, of course, we have lights, uh, electric lights. <laughs> but when I was a child, we'll, we still used yes. the little clay lamps. Clay you lamps. Still Hundreds of lamps. them, and we just line. That must have been beautiful. It was absolutely uh, gorgeous. Kind of like the luminaries yeah. that we yeah. have here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Because they actually flicker, right? Yeah, As they, against and they flickered, <laughs> and the, all the homes were lined, you know, the edges were lined with hundreds of those little clay lines. You mentioned that yeah. languages, that there right. are many different languages in India. That it's a true. land of one billion people, is that correct? About 1.08. <laughs> 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 so well, you're not going to quibble with that. That's, that's a large that is amount correct. of population, yeah. over a billion people. Exactly. And, and so they would have different languages. That is true. So something like the Festival of Lights kind of brings people together. It gives them a sense of unity. Absolutely. And this is, the, you know, symbol, you were saying symbols are powerful. The Festival of Lights mm -hmm. is a powerful symbol. In fact, you could, if you don't say it's a Diwali, like which is the Indian Festival of Lights, Christmas could be seen as a Festival of Lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lights always cheer you, right? So that's Absolutely. one, this one festival, victory over good over evil, of good over evil. That's that transcends all barriers within uh, India. As you probably know, uh, the Christian community does not know the date when Jesus was born. Some yeah. have tried to find that, but December the 25th was selected for just this reason. Right, right. right. Because in the yes. darkness of the northern areas right. Right. Uh, That's true. of northern hemisphere, at this time the, the sun is starting to come back. Right. And so that whole idea of light is kind of a bonding type of experience yeah. to give like when you were holding those lamps, the right, flickering right. lamps, to give hope to people. Exactly. What, so what so would similar. you do in the Festival of Lights for, for family? What would you as a mother do? Would there be any as special? As a mother, yeah, I would make sure to make several different sweets. Indian sweets <laughs> for the kids. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds and then familiar. Fireworks were a very big thing in India. 
now over here also we buy fireworks during 4th of July and mm -hmm. most Indians do you, we have those sparklers and uh, you know, of course, we try to follow the laws and not do too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> the dangerous kind, but in India, it was like like a whole two weeks of just these you know kids playing with fireworks. So we do we did do like mostly with sparklers for my kids. I used to buy. We hear about yeah. we hear about poverty as well as wealth in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about will this engage even those who are poor? Does this engage all segments of the population? I'm so glad you brought this up. We, we must remember the poor because we we believe the poor are as you know valuable human beings as the rich. I mean, social At the social level, financial level, yes, there are differences, but they're all children of God. And they would be, on, on the Wali day, we, we celebrate with everybody. No child goes without you know, new clothes or, no, and, no. depending on how rich you are, you can afford to buy new utensils, new mm -hmm. jewelry, new clothes, uh, great foods, and moms yeah. are critical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the festival foods. light sounds it very much like everybody. Christmas. Right. It and includes everybody. We take everybody. the kids out to shop rather than shop, give yeah. them gifts. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, as, yeah. as a child, that's what we do. And we yeah. exchange sweets at the end of the day and all the you know right. poor, poor people, they receive gifts right. if they come to the houses. Now for the Hindu yeah. community, this festival lights comes in November. Correct. Uh, October uh, or November. Uh, October or November. Uh, it's according it's to the Hindu calendar. Hindu calendar. According to the Hindu Lu calendar. Lunar calendar. We have the lunar calendar. Okay. And and it's more than one day. It, is it a, is it a week or two or does it? Actually, that's a good good point. Uh, Diwali is a is a mood. Just like from Thanksgiving, you begin to get into Christmas mood. Right. Diwali is you say, oh, Diwali holidays are coming. Diwali holidays are coming. Uh, All this how, literally how it's just like that, Christmas. That, 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 Diva Diwali, D I W A L I. Okay. Diva stands for Diwali. the earthen the lamp. lamp. Oh, that's so the it's lamp. like the, the yeah. day of those Diva, the uh -huh. lights. Diwali. Literally, it's a festival of lights if you translate it. Diwali or Dipavali also. Dipavali which is also, the same you can thing. say, yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, uh, what I'm also wondering about is since you mentioned that you had lamps when you were a child. Yes, clay lamps. Uh, we don't want to date you. Me too. Me too. But you also. Yes. But now, yes. but now you have electricity. You have, do you have flashlights, or do you still use the lamps, or what? What do you do? With oh, mix of everything. Uh, nothing goes away. Just like when television comes, radio doesn't go away, and internet comes, the television, radio all stay. Yeah. So you have uh, earthen lamps because now there's such innovation, and even other la earthen lamps, so beautifully colorful, mm -hmm. you know, earthen lamps are there. Plus, nice electric decorated. lights, candle lights, all kinds of lights we use yeah. uh, to create. Essentially, the idea is to brighten up the atmosphere. Yeah. On a not, it has to be always on that no moon day. Tomorrow, for example, on November 9th was, is the no moon day, and th that's when the Diwali is celebrated. But it will rotate then. It will depend upon the calendar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it has been. The Hindu calendar. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of times it's in August, in October. October. In October. Yeah. End October, yeah. early November. Yeah. yeah. Those now, when you take that kind of symbolic uh, event as the Festival of Lights, and you take that and celebrate that, and then you see what the um, people in this culture do, getting ready for Thanksgiving and family gathering together, hopefully, and having community Thanksgiving services and, and feeding people and doing that type. How does that give you a connection as people who were born in India, grew up there, and then came here? Does that give you a sense of, of participation in the uh, tapestry of this country? Oh, abs absolutely. absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I have my kids have, have we have gone and, and served, and you know, we, I just don't feel like you know we, we are different. We participate in everything. They did Thanksgiving. We do Christmas, just like we have a tree. We have gifts. You know, so yeah, my kids are the kids are lucky because they get to do the. Hindu as well as the Christian. I mean, I used to have Easter egg hunts in my backyard. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you immersed uh, yourself in yes, all of this. That's yes, great. Absolutely. It's like our children who go yeah. to the same schools, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like every other kid. So they like to celebrate everything. And we learn those from uh, them. Halloween. Yeah. Oh, Halloween, Christmas. Big thing. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Everything. everything. What I want our viewing yeah. audience to realize is that for people like yourselves of the Hindu community and, mm -hmm. and the, of India, that you come and you give this gift of, of what the what you have as people, but you also bring this faith, and this faith that shares respect and appreciation for, for all humanity. What are some of the challenges, as you look at your native country of India, what are some of the challenges India is experiencing now, and, and how does this festival, lights, if you will, speak to some of those challenges? Tremendous. I mean, India has had, unfortunately, this thing of the caste system, social caste system, whereby profession, they said some are Brahmins are like the, you know, those people of knowledge, the priestly class, and then the warrior class, and then the business class, and the sort of the land. And this is something that's been so passed down. That's been passed down, and that's Gandhi fought against that like anything. 
the, the, the untouchables of the lowest class, mm -hmm. of lowest of the lowest, and Gandhi renamed them as Harijan. Harijan means the people, people of God. God. He literally transformed them, the people of God, and he would be with them. He would spend time with them, so all the other leaders would say, hmm, what is Gandhi doing? Okay, well, now we have to go and talk to those folks. So he did everything to bring up the social uh, uh, level of those mm -hmm. people. And, and as we were saying, uh, Diwali is a great time where everybody comes together, everybody celebrates, and on that day you don't see the other person as lower caste or higher caste. You'd, if they come to your door, you share sweets with them, mm -hmm. etc. It really gives that sense of unity of people. I'm wondering about the caste system because we hear about that and we read about that in our mm -hmm. books and those of us who've never visited India. Is that something do you think will be changing in the future? Well, you know, you mentioned about education. It's very competitive in India and that you have to, will people be able to, through education, uh, change and move out of one, one segment of society to another? What exactly. Do you think? Uh, yeah. I think it's already happening it's already for happening. one thing. And when this caste system started, it was not supposed to be by birth. It was supposed to be by your inclination. So it was never supposed to divide people in the way that it has ended mm -hmm. up dividing people. And right now, yeah, because we used to get married only within our own caste, mm -hmm. and now I see all the time arranged marriages even, which is another thing that happens a lot in India, where they marry inter-caste and the untouchables mm -hmm. are coming up. So yeah, it's, it's disappearing. And it's really the hardest for the, that lowest segment. The other three or four, you know, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They're already pretty, pretty well off, and there's no real discrimination against them. So yeah, it's only the untouchables. And, and to yeah. address the issue yeah. of education, certainly, you know, uh, when India got independent, India got independent in 1947. We were a British colony just like uh, America was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, at that point, the first prime minister of India, whose birthday was very fond of children, whose birthday is celebrated as uh, Children's Day, and it'll come on November 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he really believed in developing human potential. So he immediately set out, set out you know, to create certain national or international quality institutions. And he said those will be the pinnacle of Indian education system. They were called uh, Indian Institutes of Technology, Indian Institutes of Management, Indian Institute of Science, etc. And so then there's an the all-feeder system of universities and colleges and schools underneath it. So that created a tremendous amount of sort of uh, pathway, roadmap for people to excel and get into those institutions. And people from you know, those institutions are you know, second to none in the world. You sound very hopeful about India and some of the changes that will be happening in your nation. And some of this comes from the young people, it sounds like. Young yeah. people have a vision of, well, we want to uh, relate to people who are outside our, <laughs> our particular prescribed caste, yes. and we're going mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You also have a language that um, I'm fascinated. Someone has asked me, what is the uh, largest uh, English-speaking nation in the world? <laughs> and I was thinking, what nation would that be? And it's then they India, said, huh? India. <laughs> Correct. And, and yet, the English is the language in India. But then you also have other languages, is that correct? That correct. Is India, India is a multilingual, and, and uh, each language has multiple sort of uh, rich literature and culture underneath. So there are about 25 uh, official languages of India uh, enshrined in the constitution, but the real glue that binds India is the English language. Mm -hmm. still, that's still the language that mm -hmm. all the linguistic people, you know, uh, upper, upper sort of cream of that whichever subculture they the like to understand. The politicians, uh, the culture is really bound together by English. Is it that is, correct? it is. English is a large part of what holds come to India together. A lot of official business is transacted in English language. A and I think. I think also the Festival of Lights. I, I think these kinds of Absolutely. things that Absolutely. bring yeah. people together and yeah. hold people together. Yeah. Yeah. When you, you mentioned about how you really felt welcome in America and how you came into this, but mm -hmm. you also have this Hindu community. How do, you, um, how do you keep that kind of cultural experience in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and keeping the Hindu community going? We had the Gandhi Walk, but what uh, are some of the other things that we you... We have uh, several temples now, Hindu temples. And uh, since, like I say, since we've always, we're not like, we don't like to isolate ourselves. Mm -hmm. I have American friends and I go with them to the temple. We go together and celebrate. So to me, there's no real line of demarcation. I mean, I we, can have- Your neighbors, yeah. your friends would My, go exact, with you to the temple? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have a very close friend, Pam, and, and she just loves to do everything with me. So, you know, and we have open, our temples are open. Anybody can come in just like churches. Yeah. Unlike you know, some that I've heard where you don't, you're not allowed to bring anybody that belongs to 
another faith. So it's, it's not been difficult at all. So the faith does not separate people, but brings people exactly, together, is that exactly. right? Exactly, that's, that's a very good way of putting it. What would yeah. be your yeah. hope for the future, for this country? You mentioned about hope for India, but what would be your hope for this country? Uh, my hope for this country would be more unity by way of faith, exactly. I think we're getting into very devi divisive politics nowadays. Mm -hmm. So that would be my greatest hope. Mm -hmm. I, in many, many ways, this country is so great. And some of this has crept in uh, ever since I've been here. I've seen it creeping in more and more at every mm -hmm. election, and my greatest hope is that we take that out mm -hmm. of politics and uh, people learn to live together. Yeah. And my hope would be is that we yeah. learn what you all celebrate and see uh, the divinity and the light of God in each and every human being. That is, of course, of paramount importance. And then if we can we truly give thanks. If, if we do that, then all the problems will solve themselves. Mm -hmm. And I would say Gandhi's message is even more relevant to this country now than it was with Martin Luther King's day. Every time there's a challenge, Gandhi's, Gandhi's discovered a process, which is nonviolence. First of all, believe in nonviolence. Go with the truth. No, no obfuscation of truth, no falsity will stand. Something made by the truth alone will win. That's, that message, I think this country needs more and more. Go back on its, you know, right to stand as the greatest country in the world. That's my hope, and it will happen. And for that to happen, there has to be some sort of ability to, to listen to one another, to yes, dialogue exactly. one another, mm -hmm. and, and hear one another's stories. Yes. And listen to those stories to them grow in an appreciation for each other. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that's the role of PLT. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about your children. Uh, your children are pretty well. They're they both get it from beauty. They both both are Longhorns. They graduated yes, from the university. Yes, my son last year. What yeah. did they think of this emphasis on football? Did they did they get onto this? <laughs> Not very much. <laughs> my son loves basketball. Yeah. Very more basketball. Yeah. 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 Did they stay in Boston? No, they were out of Boston. My daughter is in New York, and my son is in Dallas. Right. Yeah. Yes, it's wonderful. And yeah. your children are yeah, younger. Yeah, my older one. And she's on. She'll be hopefully graduating this year. She's a senior at the UT. And my younger one is a middle gr a middle schooler, and um, I hope they stay in Austin. But I, I think we will get go and build one for us. Hope and be with everyone. Well, we celebrate the festival a lot because we move in the holiday season here in Austin. Christians are beloved. What we do we want to give the Austin community as a person who has said, "This is my home now. I come in. I have a hinder faith." What would you say? What would I like to say? <laughs> would you want to say to them, Happy Holidays? Yeah, happy, holidays. <laughs> happy Holidays, Diwali, to all my Indian friends, and Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. And we have a saying in, in, in Hinduism, we have two One of them is I, that. And one of them is that one, that you are. Well, but you, you are <laughs> wonderful people share your story. Tomorrow, I mentioned, you want to